if you want more control of the contrast, a great way to do this is using colour curves. So let's see how that's done. With your original clip on the timeline, open up the RGB parade and this time from the video FX menu, drag an instance of the colour curves onto your clip. And again, view the RGB parade window and the colour curves window side by side. In the colour curves window, grab the handle at the lower end of the colour curve and drag the curve down so that it meets the horizontal axis. The more of the colour curve that meets the horizontal axis, the lower the bottom of the RGB parade will dip. Keep dragging it down until the lowest pixels in the RGB parade meet the zero marker. Now, in the colour curves window, right click at the point where the colour curve meets the horizontal axis and select create point. The curve will now snap back to a straight line. Now, do the same with the handle at the top of the curve that controls the highs, raising the top pixels in the RGB monitor to the 255 level and creating a point where the curve meets the horizontal axis. Because it's quite difficult to pinpoint precisely where the curve meets the axes, you may find that your RGB parade jumps a little after you create the new points. However, you can simply and easily adjust the points by clicking on them and dragging them along the horizontal axes until the pixels on the RGB parade are where you want them to be, i.e. just touching the 0 and 255 marks. Now look at the preview window, you'll see that the image will look pretty much exactly as it did after we had adjusted the input start and input end sliders in the levels window in our first example. Now close the RGB parade. You can now adjust the contrast using the handles of the colour curves. Again, this is largely a matter of personal taste, but I tend to find that lowering the mids works best for me. If you've never used the colour curves before, the lower handle raises or lowers the darker end of the spectrum, and the higher handle raises or lowers the lighter end of the spectrum. If, for example, you use a short top handle, this will mainly affect the brightest pixels. If you use a longer handle, the effect will be stronger towards the middle of the spectrum. If therefore you want to affect the midtones, you probably want to be using longish handles at both ends of the spectrum. In my example, I'm going to use the handles to produce an S-shaped curve, thereby increasing the contrast in the midtones. You can see the image is much richer now, and the midtones all have more contrast than they did in my first example. One problem with increasing contrast in the midtones is that you tend to also increase saturation. By this, I mean that the colours become more intense, and although that can initially appear to be quite dramatic, it can also seem quite unnatural. So it's often good practice if you've increased the contrast in the midtones to take out a little of the saturation. And here's a simple way of doing it. From the video FX menu, drag an instance of the secondary colour corrector onto your clip. We'll be discussing the secondary colour corrector in more detail in a later tutorial, so consider this a sneak preview. In the section where it says Limit Luminance, enter the number 128 into all three boxes. What this does is it selects a point exactly halfway between 0 and 255, that is to say between black and white, and then tells the secondary colour corrector to apply whatever effect you're about to apply most strongly at that point, and then in decreasing amounts on either side of it. The effect we're going to apply in this instance is desaturation. In the box that says saturation, type in the number 0.85. This will reduce the saturation of this selection, i.e. the midtones, by a factor of 0.15. Again, this is a question of taste, but 0.85 seems to be a useful all-purpose amount. It could be 0.75, it could be 0.9, it depends on the image you're correcting and your own personal preferences. What I've done is I've saved this setting in my secondary colour corrector preset menu by typing in lower saturation mids and pressing save. I can then quickly apply this to clips in future without having to type in the numbers each time. 
it's a one-click way of quickly desaturating the mids by a small amount. I can tweak the exact amount of desaturation if I want to, but I don't usually make any further adjustments. So there we are, we have two colour clips which have some pretty good tonal ranges established. Very often, this is all the colour correction I will do on a clip. I've taken a long time to explain things which actually, once you've done them a few times, are very quick and easy to apply, and which will improve the quality of your images considerably. What I've shown you assumes that the subject of your clips contains at least one true black and at least one true white. However, this isn't always the case. Have a look at this clip of reeds blowing in the wind. It's a dark and gloomy picture, and that's because it was overcast and stormy that day. It's a dark subject anyway. If I force the lightest parts of the picture to be white, I'm going to be introducing shades that simply weren't there in real life. On the other hand, I know that there were plenty of true blacks, so I do want the tonal range to extend all the way down to zero on my RGB parade. In this case, all that I do is I set the black point using the RGB parade, but use my eye to set the upper level of the range and also the mids. You can imagine a scenario, for example a snow scene or a beach scene, where there were no true blacks but plenty of true whites, where the converse would be true. Again, you would need to set your white point and then set the rest of the tonal range by eye. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Please visit www.firstcreative.tv forward slash Vegas if you'd like to download the video source file for this tutorial and also see other tutorials. I'll be back shortly with the next instalment of this series. Happy colour correcting and goodbye.